Rejoice now, heavenly hosts and choirs of angels, and let your trumpet shout salvation. For the victory of our mighty King. Rejoice and sing now, all the round earth, bright with a glorious splendor. For darkness has been vanquished by our eternal King. Rejoice and be glad now, Mother Church, and let your holy courts in radiant light resound with the praises of your people. All you who stand near this marvelous and holy place, Pray with me to God the Almighty for the grace to sing the worthy praises of this great life. Through Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, Restore 
hear the record of God's saving deeds in history, how he saved his people in ages past, and let us pray that our God will bring each of us to the fullness of redemption. I'm going to tell the story of creation as envisioned by James Weldon Johnson in his book, God's Trombones. Several times during the telling of the story, I will say, and God said, and I'd like you to respond with me, that's good. And God stepped out on space and looked around. I'm lonely, I'll make me a world. And far as the eye of God could see, darkness covered everything blacker than a hundred midnights in a cypress swamp. And God smiled, and the light broke, and the darkness rolled up on one side, and the light stood shining on the other. And God said, that's good. God gathered the light in his hands and rolled it in his hands until he made the sun and set it ablazing in the heavens. And the light that was left from making the sun, he rolled into a shining ball and put it in the darkness, spangling the night with, with the moon and the stars. And between the darkness and the light, he hurled the world and God said, that's good. Then God stepped down with his sun on his right and his moon on his left and the world beneath his feet, he walked. And as he trod, his footsteps hollowed the valleys out and bulged the mountains up. And God said, that's good. Then God stopped and looked around and saw that the earth was barren and dry. So he went over to the edge of the earth and he spat out the seven seas. He batted his lashes and the lightning flashed. He clapped his hands and the thunder rolled and the waters above the earth came down. The cooling waters came down and the green grass sprouted and the little red flower blossomed and the pine tree pointed its finger to the sky and the oak tree spread out its arms. The lakes cuddled in the hollies, hollows of the land and the rivers run down to the sea 
And God smiled again and the rainbow appeared and wrapped itself about his shoulder. And God raised his arm and spread his hand across the land and the seas. Bring forth, bring forth. And quicker than God could lower his arm. Fishes and fowl, beasts and birds swam the rivers and the seas roamed the woods and the forest and split the air with their wings. And God said, that's good. Then God looked around. He looked at his sun. He looked at his moon and his tiny stars. He looked at his earth and all of its living things. I'm lonely still. Then God sat down on the side of a mountain to think. Beside a big wide river, he sat down. With his head in his hands, he thought and thought until he thought, I'll make me a man. He scooped the clay up from the bed of the river and kneeled down beside. And there, this great God Almighty who lit the sun and put it in the heavens, who threw the stars to the far most corners of the night, who rolled the ball, the earth in the middle of his hand, this great God like a mammy bending over her baby, kneeled down in the dust and toiled over the clay until he formed it in his own image and blew into it the breath of life and man became a living soul. And God said, that's good. That's very good. Amen. Amen. Christ is the image of the unseen God. Through him all things were made. Let us pray that we may see God's image restored. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. Your love cannot be contained and overflows in the wonder of creation. You formed the universe out of nothing and molded us from the clay of the earth. All you have made sings of your marvelous deeds. O Lord, our Maker and Redeemer. Amen. This is a story of the flood, and it begins with the Lord giving instructions to Noah. 
Go into the ark, you and all your household, for I have seen that you alone are righteous before me in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and his mate, and a pair of the animals that are not clean also, the male and its mate, and seven pairs of the birds of the air, male and female, to keep their kind alive on the face of the earth. For in seven days I will send rain on the earth, for forty days and forty nights, and every living thing that I have made, I will blot out in the face of the ground. So Noah did all that the Lord had commanded. In the 600th year of Noah's life, second month, the 17th day of the month, the fountains of the great deep burst forth. The windows of the heavens were open, and the rain fell on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. On that same day, Noah and his son, Shem and Ham and Japheth, entered the ark with Noah's wife and the wives of his sons. They and every wild animal of every kind, every domestic animal of every kind, every creeping thing that creeps along the earth, every bird of every kind, every bird, every winged creature, that went into the ark, two and two of all flesh in which there was the breath of life. And those that entered, male and female, went in as God had commanded, and the Lord shut them in. The flood continued for 40 days, and the waters increased and bore up the ark. And the waters rose and steadily increased, and the ark rose high above the water. At the end of 40 days, Noah opened the window of the ark and let out a raven. It flew to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. So Noah sent out a dove to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground. But the dove found no place to set its foot, so it returned to him to the ark. For the waters were still on the face of the whole earth, and Noah put out his hand, took it, and brought it back into the ark with him. He waited seven days, and again he sent out the dove. And it returned to him in the evening, and there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. So Noah knew that the waters had subsided from the earth. He waited another seven days, and again he sent out the dove. It did not return to him anymore. In the 601st year, the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from the earth. So Noah removed the cover of the ark and looked and saw that the face of the ground was drying. In the second month, the 27th day of the month, the earth was dry. Then God said to Noah, Come out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living creature that is with you of all flesh, birds, animals, every creeping thing that creeps along the earth, so that they may abound on the earth, be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah came out with his sons, his wife, and his sons' wives. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I'm establishing my covenant with you and your descendants, with every living creature that is with you. As many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood. Never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. This is a sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature with you for all future generations. I've set my rainbow in the clouds and it will be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. The word of the Lord.
baptism, we died to sin. In Christ, we are raised to life. Let us pray that God will wash away all that corrupts his work and restore in us the beauty for which we are made. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. In your perfect justice, you hate the world's sin. Noah and his family risked ridicule for your sake, yet their obedience brought them blessing. Flood our world with the tide of your love and rid us of all that disfigures your glorious creation. O God, our maker and redeemer. Amen. A lesson from Exodus. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back and saw the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. And then they said to Moses, was it because there were not enough graves in Egypt that you brought us out here to the desert to die? What have you done bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we said to you in Egypt? Let us be to serve the Egyptians, for surely it is better to be a slave in Egypt than out here in the desert, dead. Then Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will bring for you. For those Egyptians that you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you and all you have to do is keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward, but first raise your staff and raise your hand over the sea so that the waters may be divided and the Israelites may cross the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the heart of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and his horses and his chariots and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians will see that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots and his chariot drivers. The angel of God who was going before the army of Israel moved and went behind them and the pillar of cloud also moved and went behind them between the army of Israel and the army of Egypt. And so the cloud was there with the darkness and it lit up the night and one army did not approach the other all night. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind all night so that the waters were divided. And then the Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the water forming a wall on their right and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses and his chariots and his chariot drivers. At the morning watch the Lord in the pillar of cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into a panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so they wouldn't turn properly. And the Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting with the Israelites against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand once more over the sea so that the waters may return and will come back upon the Egyptians and cover their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. And as the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the chariots and the chariot drivers into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers. And of the entire army of Pharaoh that had gone into the sea, not one remained. 
But the Israelites walked on dry ground, the water forming a wall on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. And Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and his servant Moses. Then the prophet Miriam took her tambourine and sang this song. Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. The word of the Lord. is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. Let us pray that God will give freedom to his enslaved people. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. You heard the agony of your people as they cried out from their slavery, and you gave them Moses to lead them to a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear the cry of the enslaved and the homeless today, and lead us through the turbulent sea of life to our true home with you, O Lord, our Maker and Redeemer. Amen. A reading from Ezekiel, chapter 37, 1 through 14. The Valley of the Dry Bones. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me forth in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of a valley that was full of bones. And he led me through them on every side. Now, there were many upon the face of the valley, and they were exceedingly dry. And he said to me, Mortal, dost thou think these bones shall live? And I answered, O oh, Lord God, thou knowest. And he said to me, Prophesy, 
concerning these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will send my breath into you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinew upon you, and you shall cause flesh to grow over you, and will cover you with skin. And I will give you breath, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. And I prophesied and said as he had commanded me, and as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a commotion, and the bones came together, each one to its joint. And I saw, and behold, the sinew and the flesh came upon them, and the skin was stretched out over them. But there was no breath in them. And he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, O mortal, and say to the spirit, thus saith the Lord. Come, spirit, from the four winds, and blow upon those that have been slain, and let them live again. And they lived, and they stood up upon their feet, exceeding a great army. And he said to me, Mortal, all these bones are the house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost and we are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus saith the Lord, behold, I will open your graves and will bring you out of the sepulchres, O oh, my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I shall have opened your sepulchres and brought you out of your graves, O oh, my people and shall have put my breath in you, and you shall live, and I will make you rest upon your own land, and you shall know that I have spoken, and it is done. Thus saith the Lord, Christ is the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in Christ will never die. Let us pray that God will breathe new life into his weary creation. Blessed are you, our God, breathing spirit of the world. You bring life from the darkest valley of death. When hope is lost and our dry bones are scattered in shame, Speak your word to your broken people, that we may stand confidently before you and breathe your spirit into us that we might live, O Lord, our Maker and Redeemer. Amen. Hear the commandments of life, O Israel. Give ear and learn wisdom. Why is it, O Israel? Why is it that you are in the land of your enemies? That you are growing old in a foreign country? That you are defiled with the dead? That you are counted among those in Hades? 
you have forsaken the fountain of wisdom. If you had walked in the way of God, you would be living in peace forever. Learn where there is wisdom, where there is strength, where there is understanding, so that you may at the same time discern where there is length of days in life, where there is light for the eyes and peace. Who has found her place? And who has entered her storehouses? But the one who knows all things knows her. He found her by his understanding. The one who prepared the earth for all time, filled it with four-footed creatures. The one who sends forth the light, and it goes. He called it, and it obeyed him, trembling. The stars shone in their watches, and were glad. He called them, and they said, Here we are. They shone with gladness for him who made them. This is our God. No other can be compared to him. He found the whole way to knowledge, and gave her to his servant Jacob, and to Israel whom he loved. Afterwards she appeared on earth, and lived with humankind. She is the book of the commandments of God, the law that endures forever. All who hold her fast will live, and those who forsake her will die. Turn, O Jacob, and take her. Walk towards the shining of her light. Do not give your glory to another, or your advantages to an alien people. Happy, Happy are we, O Israel, Israel, for, for we, we know, know what is pleasing to God. God.
God, who made this most holy night to shine with the glory of the Lord's resurrection. Stir up in your church that spirit of adoption which is given to us in baptism, that we, being renewed both in body and mind, may worship you in sincerity and truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A lesson from Paul's letter to the Romans. Do you not know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has been raised, as he said. Come. See the place where he lay, then go quickly and tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell the disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him and took hold of his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I come to you tonight from our home in West Columbia and wish you a blessed Easter. Alleluia, that Christ is risen. 
and say just a few words about what Easter and resurrection might have in store for us. We're in a time right now where a lot of people are afraid. A lot of things are closing down. And yet Jesus tells us that he will come again. And he was raised from the dead through the promise and the mighty power of God. I've read an article earlier today that talked about this particular moment in our history and described it as the great pause, the likes of which we have never seen in our society. And I would bet that most people haven't seen, at least in the modern world, for centuries. And I think what's interesting about this is that it's causing us forcing us to slow down, take a breath, take a pause, and decide what is really most important in the world. The churches, the church buildings, are closed. And yet the church is more active now than it has been in decades. People are calling each other and checking up on each other. People are taking food to one another's homes. People are praying every day. And while we cannot see each other in person, we have had more contact within our congregation than in any recent time that I can remember. And so while the virus may have tried to steal Easter, the power of God and God's love has conquered the virus already. We are already raised as a body. We are already raised as a church. We are already raised as a more loving and compassionate people. In the weeks and months to come, there will be an awful lot of talk about returning things to normal, about how important it is for us to get the economy going again and for people to start shopping again and spending again and for kids to get back to school and people get back to work. And all of that is important. But I hope that once the turn, wheels start turning again, we still take a breath to think about what is it about our lives that we really want to return to? And what should we just leave in the grave? The busyness of our lives, I don't miss that at all. The love and the conversation and the time I'm spending with family and in contact with you all, I don't want to lose that. And so what I'll say to you today is as we pray for those who have died and we pray for those who are sick and we pray for those who have sacrificed their time and energy for the healing of the people in our society. Let us also remember that in this great pause, this period of time that we have to spend with one another, there is at least this blessing that we can choose what it is that we return to and that we can choose what it is that we will leave behind. Let us now pray using the words our Lord and Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and for nourishing us. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, and restored, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. In the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Happy Easter.